Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII on the Mysterious JG. So yeah, that was one uh, humdinger of a video to end out uh, my recording session last night. Um, and I gotta be honest with you guys, I spent at least an hour. Because I felt bad that I knew I wasn't going to edit it out. I knew I wasn't going to redo the video. I... <laughs> Something has to go pretty long before I redo a video. You guys, my editing room floor is very clean. I've, I remember, I won't name the name of the uh, LP here, but there was another LP here who's kind of a friend of mine who was making fun of me for it, and I kind of got a little defensive back and forth with him in the comments because, um, you know, I, I, they, they were somebody who does, like, big, long streams, uh, you know, multiple hours, and then cuts them into videos, and doesn't doesn't really put any kind of name like the name will just be such and such game part one such and such game part two there's never any kind of individual description so I was I was like firing back and angry about that um, because they were teasing me for not editing out a bunch of stuff which you know come to think of it they they do streams they're not editing out anything either but what am I getting at? The point is, I, I don't edit that much stuff out, but I do a ton of off-screening, particularly in games like this, where I'm just grinding for levels. This game has not reached Final Fantasy XII levels for me. Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age remake, just crazy amounts of off-screen stuff to try to showcase all the content. And that's a game where I very much hit a point where I'm like, you know, I'm not doing 10 hours of this fucking fishing mini-game so we can have a, you know, 30-second non-voice-acted conversation with Gilgamesh I'm not doing it you know but anyway yeah but I do feel bad like when I have a video where I'm like yeah you know <laughs> um, let's just say an early professional uh, YouTube LP here because the current thing is just crank out as much content as you can and don't edit shit that's kind of how professional LPing seems to work these days but you think about the early folks who just like put a lot of polish into their stuff yeah I know that if I was one of those channels, that whole last video probably would have gotten chucked. But I need you guys to know, I spent like an hour plus last night on triple speed, running in and out of all the rooms in Balaam, leaving and re-entering Balaam to try to reset where uh, that little kid was going to spawn and talking to him. I went back and watched, and I was kind of jumping our head, you know, five, ten seconds at a, at a batch to find any scene in my previously recorded footage where I was actually in Zell's room and may have picked up that, uh, it's a speed up item. I may have picked it up. I may have actually given it to somebody immediately and forgotten about it. Uh, and it's not impossible that then not only did I forget about it, but while researching through the old, old footage, I just missed it. But I don't think so because I could have done all the prerequisites to get that item to be available for pickup in Zell's bedroom before we did the actual plot line where we go to Balaam and it's occupied by Galbadia. But I've only got about two or three videos worth of that once Balaam is occupied by Galbadia. And you have actually, because you can't access Zell's bedroom before that sequence. So it's entirely possible that I did the prerequisite steps and it was there. But from my review of the footage, I never picked it up. Uh, so I either picked it up and just in reviewing the footage, just skipped around at exactly the wrong time and missed it. Or maybe it was really early in the lengthy marathon recording session I did yesterday, and I got it on a return trip to Balaam. But even that stuff, I was kind of like, no, I never really went back to Balaam that I can remember after I started doing the, um, you know, whatever the heck, the, the Shumi tribe stuff. I don't think I ever went back to Balaam after that, blah, blah, blah. And if I did... It would have been like an hour or two before earlier in the session, not like five hours. Like, I think I would have remembered, blah, blah, blah. The point I'm getting is I spent a lot of time trying to figure this thing out, and I just can't freaking do it. I did eventually get the kid, and this is this is like 45 minutes plus into running in and out of Balaam and going to all the different places and finding him and repeating the same sequences over and over. His mom chases him out of a building, and you talk to his mom and a person sitting on the park bench outside of the Wapit Shop at and they talk about how he takes after Zell, and Zell's a real handful. The scene where he pushes down the mayor's daughter. Uh, I kept finding him lying on the floor face down in Zell's house's family room, saying he hates naps. 
eventually I got the scene where you find him hiding behind some boxes. But nothing ever actually unlocked. And, and they, I looked at multiple websites. Nobody actually shows a picture of it, so it's possible I just was angled the wrong way in the bedroom when I was looking for it. But I've been in there repeatedly. Okay, Squall, now turn like 10 degrees to your left and now search where this thing is supposed to be. Can't find it. Different websites had slightly different versions of what all the prerequisites were because nobody really seems to understand it. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so I'm just like, fuck, I don't care anymore. Um, there is a way to get the speed up items. Uh, come disc three, behemoths will be a thing we can encounter in the world map. They drop an... It'll be a farming thing. They drop an item... And you, you need quite a few of those, and you can refine them, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So if I, see it, if I decide I really want to pump up people's base speed stats, there are other ways to do it. This is a single speed up item that I'm just like, at this point, I'm, I'm way ahead of you guys in what's published, but if you guys are commenting in the prior video, like, oh, yeah, dummy, you got it back in video 45, I'm, I'll be like, oh, cool. And if you're like, no, you didn't get it, but actually, here's the thing that I know that you happen to have missed that you need to do, that'll be fine, too. But we do have to move on at some point. So sorry about the last video. Now I'm going to come back. We're going to go to Windhill. We're going to do some stuff in Windhill. I've already spent seven minutes griping, wasting more of your time. We're moving on. Uh, Windhill should be pretty short and simple. Oh, didn't I just... Did, did, this is... Oh, no. That, yeah, that's no encounters. Why am I encounter... Oh, I know what this might be. Yeah, you get these little goofy encounters with Poo Poo. And I only know it's called Poo Poo. I don't think it's, I don't think it's even called Poo Poo in this game. I have some not terribly fond memories of fighting Poo Poo in the DLC for Final Fantasy 13-2 over and over and over trying to actually get the Poo Poo Crystal to drop. But yeah, Poo Poo in this game shows up as this kind of random encounter that's just kind of for fun. I believe eventually we can actually do combat with Poo Poo, but you have to have a certain number of just rando encounters occur first. Also, I'm realizing now, okay, off screen, the other thing I meant to describe, off screen I stripped everybody of all their junctions so that I could work with base stats, and it turns out I didn't need to do that anyway, uh, for other reasons. I gave, uh, we had um, status times four, uh, which I gave to, which GF did I give status defense four to? I think Pandemona, because Pandemona had element defense times two, and with status defense times four, now anybody with Pandemona has Decent elemental defense options. No status attack, but they've got good status defense. So this person could be handy. Um, status attack would be nice too. But but whoever gets this is eventually going to be in a good position to deal with Marlboros. I had to give it to somebody. Like I, I ended up going through and looking at the skills and thinking, based on my layouts, Pandemona would be a good one to give status for too. Tonberry ended up getting Luck J in part because... Well, mostly because he already has Luck plus 50. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to give, if I'm really going to, like, concentrate on luck for one character, I might as well really concentrate on luck for one character. So between luck J and luck plus 50, I should be able to get somebody's luck to max. Um, did a little bit of reading, and it's game facts. Take everything with a, with a grain of salt because it's all coming from fans, and some of them are fantastic, and some of them will just say shit that they have not researched at all. They're just, like, throwing out vague notions as though they were facts, so you got to always be careful with the game facts, but if game facts is to be trusted, luck affects your critical hit rate, and that's pretty much it. Um, so I was about to focus on Squall having a super high critical hit rate because he does so much damage anyway, and luckily somebody reminded me, and this is true, critical hits for Squall are controlled entirely by your timing with the trigger button, so he's the only character for whom boosting luck doesn't do anything useful. Uh, and then for the uh, stat boosts up, I know I had one spirit boost up, which I gave to Irvine, because he ended up, despite having spent one turn fewer than he should have, 
with the HP boost. I guess that doesn't affect spirit, because I gave everybody spirit and vigor, or vitality rather, for their entire leveling up. But yeah, he came out with a lower spirit stat than anyone, anyone else. I had like one, maybe two magic boosts, which I think I gave to... I can't remember if it was Kaidas or Renoa. It wasn't Selfie. And then I had four strength boosts, which I ended up splitting between Kaidas and Selfie. Because uh, even though Selfie's supposed to be a magic-based character, I only really use her limit break against... Like, hey, it's Lollapalooza Canyon. I didn't realize that. Wow. But I, I don't really use Selfie's limit break that much. So when I am using her, she's... Especially against regular enemies, as most of the combat is. She's just throwing out physical attacks anyway. And her strength stat was really garbage compared to everyone else. And then Kaidas, because she's meant to have a, a mixed build. I think... Maybe I gave magic to Renoa. I gave Renoa something. But the point is, all those items have been distributed. But I kind of forgot to junction anybody up. Interesting to know that shutting off combat encounters doesn't prevent the poo-poo encounter. But uh, there shouldn't be any combat encounters in town. Where the, oh, we, oh, I didn't know this was an exit for this town. Interesting. But yeah, this is going to be a completely non-combat video, I, I'm expecting. So there's no particular reason. You can't come in here. Na 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 I'm getting jiggy with it. There's no reason for me to worry about. Um, I, I hopefully will remember off screen. Oh yeah, I took everybody's junctions off. I should probably uh, rebuild them off screen. Because it does take a minute. Once you've completely un unjunctioned everything, it takes a minute. If you're just switching junks, it's like, yeah, I got three people who are built up to acceptable combat stats. But if you completely unjunction everything, it's like, okay, now I gotta got go through and make sure I don't give all three GFs that give you magic boost to the same person so I have two people with no magic boost, blah, blah, blah. No, you cheated. Stop it. What does that even mean? I mean, they're playing some kind of game where she's saying, you can't catch me, and she's older and presumably faster and more agile. I guess when you're a little kid, if you lose, you basically just say you cheated. You know, a little a little kid like our president who was complaining about voter fraud even when he won. <laughs> this is true, folks. Look it up. Oh, hello. I've never seen you all before. Are you here to buy flowers? No, if we buy a flower from you... You'll end up getting killed by Sephiroth, and I don't want that on my conscience. You see these flowers in the cask? I grew all of them. Aren't they pretty? I wish I could take them back to the city. No one can draw. Oh, that's right. I, okay, well, whatever. I have to set up junctions to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. Originally, we were opposed to letting outsiders into our village, but Hall and Nash have been a great boon, and I'm glad we hired those two guys for security. Before they came, the kids couldn't even play outside. Apparently... Laguna and Kiros, who are... I shouldn't spoil it. Maybe you were like, Oh, we're going to go to Windhill. We're going to meet old Laguna and old Kiros. No, it will be a bit... You know, if, 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 if we ever get to meet Laguna, Kiros, and Ward, or any subset of that group, it will be treated a little bit more um, eventfully than we just randomly run across them in Windhill still fighting monsters. You know what, I shouldn't start here, although we can come in here, which we couldn't before. And this is where the quest that we're going to do is, I... Having said we're not going to meet them here, I still think the logical step the first time I came here was to try to investigate what happened to their old digs. And this place does appear to be abandoned. Oh, by the way, during my off-screen efforts to, like, hours running back and forth, trying to get that speed-up item, I did level down to 27. Rain? No. Hey, what do you think you are? Who do you think you are barging into my house like this? Get out of here right now. Well, I mean, lock the door, lady. Not that that excuses what we did, but it's probably a good idea. I just told you to get out. I thought I told you to... What's with you? Do I remind you of someone? I'm not her ghost or anything, all right? Then again, there are spirits lurking within these walls. You know, gin, vodka. Let's play with rules that aren't in this region. Travia's rules, okay? Uh, I think Travia has quite favorable rules, actually. But I also... Th if I understand the way the rules are set up in Galbadia right now, there's nothing... Uh, 
The Galbadian rules, we won't be able to lose, like, same wall or whatever the fuck rule Galbadia has that I don't like but isn't that bad. Because there's nothing in Trabia that can spread to here at the moment. Well, hold on, let's see. Oh. Hell no. Hell no. Okay, so I, I don't know what happened. I don't know where all that shit's from. I haven't messed with the trade rules in Galbadia in a long time, but this place should be using Galbadia rules. Maybe it doesn't, whatever. But yeah, we were in Trabia playing guard cards with people, and they had they had some real straightforward rules I liked. A non-random open trade all. That's the per those are the rules you want when you're playing the AI. What's this? Oh, I think that's a quest item for the quest we haven't initiated yet. All right, well, I wanted to start off by checking the places that we might have expected to run into Rain, Laguna, or any of the other people from that flashback. I mean, we know Alone's not still here. But we don't, at this point, know what has happened in the interim. Alone is a few years older than Squall, so she's in her late teens, maybe her, maybe her early 20s. Uh, and she was just a little kid there. So let's say... Let's say... Ballpark 15 years have passed between that Laguna flashback. And the Laguna flashbacks are spread across time. Right? But uh, that Laguna flashback was probably about 15 years in the past. So, just for purposes of, like, what's changed here, that's that's what makes sense. You do not appear to be a person we can interact with. My husband is very upset by the fact that the vase is missing... A ghost? Oh, please! There's no such thing. Is there? Well, if there is, it's Final Fantasy, so you'd either use curative magic or fire, and you'll be alright. Are you gonna have weird-ass rules? No, you just don't play cards. Come to think of it, I've noticed some strange things lately, like stuff in the house being rearranged by itself. Perhaps it was because of an earthquake when we were still asleep. Sure. I mean, depending on how they were rearranged, if they all fell over and broke, yes. If they moved from one shelf to another intact, probably not Earthquake. You seem to know rule unfamiliar to this region. Let's play a game mixing Travia's rules and our rules. I'm just curious what they're going to throw at us. The same weird shit. Okay. The open rule has spread throughout this region. Okay. Random is still is bad. Spreading open is good. Abolishing random is probably better. And I think we can't abolish random now that I've done that. So, crap. I probably shouldn't have done anything with cards without saving first. Oh, for crying out loud. Alright, here's... Ten more minutes to fill, roughly. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to start this quest, and I'll probably just come back and, and replay the little... little Because I did a lot of chit-chat in this. I can probably just replay this off-screen, having saved outside of Windhill and not um, not mess with card rules. Because I think, I think we... Yeah, I, I didn't remember this place doesn't have open for some reason. What we need to do is play... I'd save outside. I'd play and get rid of... Random. Instead of spreading open, I get rid of random... I play again, instead of spending open, I, spreading open, I try to get rid of same plus or whatever. Random is the worst rule. Um, that's if I care about changing the card rules here, but I do remember seeing in the fact I've been reading, now that I think about it, it did mention there's weird card rules here, but there's also ne no rare cards to be obtained. So, like, the only reason to fix the card rules here is if you're worried about the end game. Because at the end game, you've got all the CC Card Club members gathered in one place, and they just throw out random rules that they want to use for you to win rare cards. And to that end, if you're really... And I am. At this point, I'm committed. I'm going to try to get every card in the game, even if some of it is off-screen. 
because I've never done it before, and this is one of my favorite games, so I figure I might as well accomplish that once in my gaming career. As silly as the card game can be, it, it's a thing that it's just, yeah, it'd be, it would be fun to have full cleared Final Fantasy VIII, beat Omega Weapon, get all the cards, all the things I never bothered with before, whatever. So it's probably just for just for purposes of that, not for purposes of actually playing cards with anyone in Windhill, but just for purposes of that, I probably eventually want to come do the old, this would be an off-screen thing, save outside of town, go in, play a card game until the rule change that I want happens, go outside, save, keep doing it, until at a minimum, random's gone, open has spread, and maybe get rid of at least one of the other bad rules here. But yeah, ten minutes left, I'll just fill it out with gameplay and then just have to make up for it off-screen. The vase, something that JG didn't bother to read. So many unusual things happening lately, I bet you there's a ghost here. I heard from the previous owner, a car rammed itself through here. The mansion is cursed, I tell you. So yeah, finding the pieces of this vase is the quest, but nobody has asked me to do it yet. I definitely remember having uncovered this quest in my PS1 playthrough. I'm look I I'm looking for my feet. Have you seen my feet? Quit joking around, Irvine. Hey, 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 I didn't say anything. Did you hear a southern twang from that armor? Oh, that reminds me. Um Well, let's finish this first. Yo man, quit joking around. It ain't funny. In my efforts to find out if I had done something wrong with getting that speed up item in Balam from uh, Little Rascal, Big Rascal, whatever his name is, uh, I I watched somebody else's LP episodes, and I'm not going to mention their name because while I've got good things to say, I've also got bad things to say, and if the bad overwhelms the good, and the person hears about it, they'll take offense, and I'm not trying to pick a fight with anybody. But no, this LP, I, I, wanted, I have to say, this LP had, a, had kind of a flat delivery, it was a little, it seemed a little lifeless to me, I probably, whatever, I go off on all these crazy asides, you either love me or hate me, I think, at this point. But yeah, they had kind of a, just sort of a lifeless, just kind of very generically narrating what happened. But one thing they did, that I pride myself on trying to do as well, and they did it even better, you remember how I went back and forth and showed you all the different versions of what can happen when you take Selfie into Zell's room the first time you ever enter Zell's room? I did that based on a fact, saying, oh, and if you bring in Selfie, make sure you use this decision so you don't lose seed points. So this guy did bring in Selfie, and he commented, she says that, but I don't, I'm not convinced your seed rank goes down. Mine never went down. Which is the same observation I had. And I don't think you could really, really tell. But what they realized, and I didn't, and they appeared to be playing, uh, well, they either, well, I don't know that they weren't playing on a PS4, now that I think about it, they were just editing, which, I'm, again, I'm, I'm lazy about editing. They actually went in and, like, freaking similar to what I was doing, because I was using an emulator, so it was easy to do with save states, this is post to post-production editing. Back on final, back in Final Fantasy X on an emulator, I showed every possible outcome of these, you know, riding the speeders across Lake Baikonel sequence. All the different people you could ride with. Somebody patted me on the back about that in this series, which is what reminded me, yeah, I did do that. That was actually kind of cool. I'm glad I did that. I, f I felt like I was showing off everything. Well, I'm not going to go back and redo it, but yeah, actually, there's a unique sequence for everybody, not just Selfie. Selfie is just the only one that gives you a choice. Everybody has a unique sequence. So, um, well, I just said I wasn't going to give the LPers name because I kind of knocked them for having a really flat sort of delivery. But... Um, had a lot more views per video than I did for this. Not as many subscribers, but they haven't been doing this as long. But, um, and here I am being all competitive about that nonsense. But the point is, yeah, there are, there are different ones. So uh, you can go look them up if you're really curious. Uh, but to sum up, Irvine's was kind of funny. Because he comes in and this makes a crack about, well, I mean, there's nothing interesting about hanging out in a boy's room. But then he sees the guns on the wall and gets all excited. And, and at first, Zell is like, Hey, don't touch those. Those are my grandfather's. But Irvine is just like, oh my god, these are so cool. These are the coolest thing ever. And then Zell kind of like, kind of like softens a bit. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. I can tell you're really excited. Go ahead and, you can go ahead and check them out. 
But then Irvine, and the screen goes black because they didn't bother to animate this, but apparently Irvine pulls one off the wall and actually shoots it, and everyone's like, whoa. Uh, the Renoa one was probably the, the next cutest after that was the Renoa one because they come in and um, and Renoa asks about the guns on the wall. And Zerf explains, they belong to my grandfather. My grandfather was, was a hero of mine. During the Sorceress War, he took care of the family, and it was a really stressful time, but he was always very cool, very calm, very collected. His cool, you know, his ability to control his emotions and his just, you know, coolness under pressure really saved my family. And Squall said, and then Squall says, wow, kind of like the opposite of you, huh? And Renoa titters and so I was like yo squall why you dissing me like he literally I believe says why you dissing me dissing me in my own home and then Renoa says you know squall maybe you take the whole cool thing a little too far and then Zell starts to laugh and it's kind of zany and fun Kaidas goes up to that weird thing hanging up in the corner like standing in the corner that I thought was some kind of computer and actually identify because I had no idea what the hell it was. She identifies it as being like the hoverboard that we saw him with earlier in the game. And she's like, "Wait a second, wasn't your hoverboard taken away?" Remember, because he's the kung fu hippie from Gangsta City. Something, something, something. You the fool he pity. But anyway, he says, "Oh yeah, when you're like me and you get in trouble and you're serious with hoverboards, you need to have more than one." And then Kaidas starts recalling an incident earlier where apparently he lost control of his hoverboard and accidentally flew it straight into the women's R-E-S dot 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 and Zell cuts him off, before, her cut off before she can finish the story. And that's all the combinations. Yeah, that's it. So there you go. I just accounted, I recounted them to you verbally. Now I'm really, this whole video is just a bit shot. <laughs> so, um... I like that Zell runs extra far away because he's a chicken wuss. It's going to turn out there's some kind of like robot in there. Oh, it's a, a baby chocobo. A chickabo. Real cool chickabo. Well, there you go. Not a completely worthless video. I caught you up on a little bit of off screening. Basically, purely because we encountered Poo Poo for the first time, I I probably should scrap this. I'm not going to scrap it. But when we come back next time, I'm going to we'll do the quest that I came here to do in the first place. Sorry, guys, <laughs> not my best. Um, but yeah, that whole thing where I think I spreading the open rule is a good thing, but it's I need to avoid having that happen, because once that's happened, I have no ability to change any other rules, because there's nothing else that can spread here that is desirable. So if I'm serious about manipulating card rules here, I have to... Um, I have to make sure that I don't spread open to the region until I've abolished some of the... Uh, I've explained it before, there have to be at least two possible rule changes before the game will make a rule change. Uh, that's not exactly right. There has to be a rule that can spread to the region, and a rule that can be abolished. If you have three different rules you want to abolish, but you don't have anything that you can spread, I'm pretty sure the game isn't going to... isn't going to do it for you. Not 100% sure... But I'm pretty sure. And this would be a real... Like, if I, I... I'm gonna put... I think I'll put this off. Because doing this right would be a pain. I would need to play a game here. Change one rule. This would be much easier to do when I have the, the last airship. So I think all I'm gonna do is come back and just not play cards with anyone. And sometime before we end Act 3 and go to Act 4. Disc 3 and Disc 4. When it's more convenient to manipulate rules because you have a ship that can fly you back and forth from region to region far more quickly than Balam Garden, we will deal with all that stuff then. And I'll probably do most of that off screen to avoid having videos like this, which kind of sucked. Next video won't suck as much. See you then.